the Netherlands is known for its innovation. From their windmills to their transportation systems, the Dutch are one of the world's leaders in technology. My name is Ethan, and I'll be taking you on a tour of the Netherlands to see just what makes Dutch engineering and design so unique. In this part, we'll see how the Dutch have adapted to defend against their frequent flooding and how they maintain their relationship with the sea, both historically and in modern day. The Dutch could not have created the Netherlands without windmills. They played an important function of pumping water out to the North Sea to create dry, farmable land. The way these windmills go about their job is actually rather simple. When there is enough wind to power it, the front of the windmill is turned towards the direction the wind is blowing. The spinning of the windmill's blades is then used to spin an axle connected to a system of gears that ends of a pump. The windmills in Kinderdijk were used to create and maintain much of the farmland that makes up the Netherlands. Using a system of dikes, embankments constructed to prevent flooding, these windmills help to create the low-lying tracts of land or polders that are still lived on today. In the old days, windmills used to do the job of lifting water from a lower elevation to a higher elevation, but nowadays it's done by these giant Archimedes screw pumps. Everywhere you go in the Netherlands, you're constantly reminded about sea level and elevation, as flooding is a huge issue here, with around half the country being below sea level. So here in Deventer, um, we have this display that shows that top of this levee here is around six and a half meters above sea level. Many of the flood defenses we see in the Netherlands today were established after the 1953 North Sea Flood. The worst storm in 500 years whips the North Sea into a boiling cauldron. Flood tides lashed by hurricane winds defy the heroic efforts of thousands of workers to reinforce the dikes and race inland to inundate one-sixth of Holland's land area. Even as these pictures were taken at the height of the storm, the death toll stood at 1,400. And as rescue work progressed, it was feared the grim total might reach the 2,000 mark. The 1953 North Sea Flood was one of the worst storms to ever hit the Netherlands. While the Netherlands had managed to get by before with windmills and relatively simple dikes up until then, the storm utterly destroyed nearly all of the established flood defense infrastructure, causing mass destruction and loss of life. As a result of this catastrophe, the government began to review their flood defense systems more closely, establishing the Delta Commission to study what exactly went wrong and how they could improve for the future. The studies conducted by the commission led to many of the Netherlands' modern-day flood defenses, all part of the Dutch Delta Works. One major part of these defenses is the Mosselt Kering Storm Surge Barrier. I'm here at the Mosling Caring Storm Surge Barrier. It is part of the Dutch Delta Works coastline defense system. It protects the city of Rotterdam from flooding and is the largest moving structure in the world. Built in the waterway that connects Rotterdam Harbor to the North Sea, the Mosling Caring Storm Surge Barrier couldn't be built like the other barriers that are part of the Dutch Delta Works, such as the Oosterskid Caring Barrier, as such a wall-like design would hinder access to Rotterdam Harbor, one of the largest ports in the world. The solution was to build two gigantic curved gates on either side of the waterway, which left the passage open to most ships passing through. Currently, the barrier is an automated system that monitors weather conditions and sea level data to determine whether or not to close. However, as climate change causes worldwide sea level rises, the barrier may need to begin closing far more often, along with many more precautions that may need to be made in preparation. Due to the Netherlands' history of flood defense and land reclamation, 
It only makes sense that they would have some things that we could learn from in adapting to the changing climate. Going back to the previous example, the storm surge barriers used to protect the Netherlands could also be modeled in other at-risk areas in order to protect cities and harbors. Additionally, there's the option of moving structures to lower risk areas and building dikes and polders to make sure that when flooding does occur, it occurs in areas that are safe for populations. Such measures are exemplified in projects such as the Room for the River program. As sea levels begin to rise even further, even these two options might not be enough. So, several kinds of structures, such as floating domes and other kinds of aquatecture, are now being tested in case flooding reaches the point where dry land becomes excessively scarce. Dutch are known for their innovations in climate change. Here in the Driven Pavilion are three floating domes, showcasing the emerging field of aquatecture. This is one way we can adapt to climate change in the future. This is one way to adapt to sea level rise. In the future, we might have to float our trees. Overall, from their seawalls to their windmills, the Dutch have shown that they are well equipped to not only defend themselves against the sea, but thrive in the land they reclaimed from it.